take you to the Stan Sheriff Center for our highlights from the Wahine Volleyball match against Pac West champion BYU Hawaii. Introduce you to the young leaders of the Pac West, our student athlete advisory committee, and bring you soccer highlights featuring Hawaii Pacific, Point Loma, Holy Names, and Azusa Pacific. Here on Pac West Magazine, we're talking about the fall season. So that means volleyball. So let's go check out some highlights from the gym. The Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii hosted Division II's eighth ranked BYU Hawaii women's volleyball team of the Pac West against the country's seventh ranked women's team in Division I, the University of Hawaii Rainbow Wahine. The Seasiders and their pack of fans made the 45 minute drive from Laie to Manoa for a late season matchup between island rivals that would be televised statewide and talked about all day in the papers. Having already taken the two top ranked teams in Division II to the brink, the Seasiders would be up to the challenge of the storied Wahine program. But playing in the island's largest venue in front of 5,000 screaming fans with tens of thousands more watching at home would be a daunting challenge on this night. The team in red would get off to a shaky start, allowing the Wahine to get up big before the Seasiders could shake off the nerves. The story of the match would be serving. The Wahine pounded 12 aces on the visitors, while BYU Hawaii committed 9 service errors. But the pride of the North Shore had many bright spots, with each member of the team doing her part to hit a very respectable 206 on the night. Courtney Skaggs put up 4 kills from her middle position. Stella Chen chipped in 5 kills of her own from the outside, even though she was targeted all night. Ariel Su hit 313 on 6 kills to keep herself in the top 25 in the nation in hitting percentage, along with teammates Chen and Lauren Hagemeyer. Michelle Tavanga was not intimidated by the Wahine, putting away seven kills of her own and winning this battle at the net. But the leader of the night was the team's steady rock all season, Pegamai. The senior lefty banged 10 kills to help her team build a big lead in the third game, before the Wahine were able to get the sweep in three close games. Well, we need it. We definitely need the, the competition. We got the competition. They dominated us in every aspect of the game, but it was good experience for the kids to come and play in this environment. I think we're in a good spot. I think from this game, we should have we, sh we should have been close with them if we would have played our level, but of course they're in their atmosphere. I think we got a little nervous, a little timid playing a big D1 school, but I think this is a, a good proving ground to say, hey, we can compete with some of the best, and in previous games we showed that as well. So coming up for our big Kilo match, we're excited, we just want to win and then move forward and get ready for regionals. We just prepared a team for what's to come down the road, and so, you know, regionals are going to be tough. You know, all the teams are going to have the better teams than the Nationals as those teams. It was good to secure our spot. I mean, it's important. We want to prove that we're we're the winners and we're undefeated. And I think I don't, I'm just excited to play. <laughs> this is my last season before I finish, so I want to go out with a bang. We still have a lot of things to work on, but every game gets us closer. Well, I think it's great to have new teams. You know, it's nice to have, uh, you know, like Fresno Pacific, Point Loma coming in, Azusa Pacific and Holy Names, those coming in, I think will just uh, help the, the conference to improve not only volleyball but all sports. So I think it's good to see different teams coming in. I chose Division II because athletes graduate at a higher rate. I can stay closer to home and be an important part of the community. I chose Division II because I can double major. And take part in campus activities. 
I chose Division II because classrooms are smaller. Students have more time with their instructors. And I can compete for a national championship. I chose Division II for all these reasons and more. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose, I chose Division II. Imagine, imagine collaborating with a diverse group of people from different backgrounds who all share common values. A place where giving back to the community is not only encouraged, but expected. Where your professor is not just a teacher, but a mentor. Imagine a place where individual leadership is prized. Imagine Chaminade University. Hi everybody, I'm PacWest Commissioner Bob Hogue, here with the latest about the PacWest, the largest NCAA Division II conference in the West region. Here's a look at one of our latest stories around the great PacWest. It's a tradition in the NCAA to get your student athlete leaders together to make a difference. We call it SAC. That stands for Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Each year, the PacWest SAC leaders hold a retreat to discuss major issues that affect student athletes around the conference and around NCAA Division II. This year, the PacWest SAC retreat was held in Anaheim, California, where representatives of our 14 schools joined their SAC advisors for a weekend that covered everything from community service to campus issues to a social event. The Anaheim SAC Weekend, hosted by California Baptist University, started with a community service project at the Orange County Rescue Mission, where the SAC leaders worked hard to help clean up a facility that helps people who are less fortunate than themselves. And our student athletes were able to provide service and volunteering opportunities at the Orange County Rescue Mission and provide an opportunity for individuals to see that student athletes do care about their community. It was a great experience, there was a way for them to give back, and they did a great job. Later, the PacWest SAC leaders would bond with a great outing at nearby Disneyland. For many, it was the first time they had ever been to the Magic Kingdom. In between, there was plenty of serious business, including the discussion of the SAC's number one project in the NCAA, raising funds for Make-A-Wish Foundation. I mean, if you get online and you look at the tools that Make-A-Wish provides through their social media and you can see these stories of these children and what they really go through and just this simple dream to be able to do one thing that is really meaningful in their life. It's just really touching to so many. Last year, the PacWest SAC leaders decided to make a great statement. They pledged to raise at least $2,000 per school to become one of the leaders among NCAA Division II conferences. There's this one video that really touches me because, you know, living at, at BYU-Hawaii and being on the North Shore and being able to go out and surf with friends and just, that's something that so many people take for granted and there was one little girl that wanted to just be able to go out and surf with Bethany, Bethany Hamilton, who's her idol, and it just, it was so cute. It has this video of her at home on the mainland and she d drags her dad's surfboard out and she practices paddling and standing up and they were able to fly her to Oahu to meet Bethany and go surf with her for one day and just you know have her in small little ankle biter waves catching these waves but that was such a huge moment for her to be able to meet her idol and do something so meaningful that she's never gonna forget it. Not only did the PacWest reach this lofty goal but our 10 schools exceeded it impressively raising more than $25,000 as a conference including more than $11,000 raised by Grand Canyon University. The PacWest SAC ended up finishing fifth among all NCAA Division II conferences, while Grand Canyon was second amongst all NCAA Division II schools. Because we really wanted to grant our own wish. We really wanted to 
be able to have that relationship with a Make-A-Wish child, to be able to grant it a wish all on our own and not have to kind of have whatever we raise be split up and separated so that way we can just focus on a specific individual, know that we have an impact so it makes it all, you know, really worthwhile. As for the school, because we've grown so much, it makes it a lot easier to be able to raise donations. So we are obviously are very blessed in that aspect because we, with the growth, we have the potential to raise more donations and everything like that. We ended up picking the 16-year-old boy who uh, wanted to go to Paris, France for a week. So when uh, it's finally all said and done and clarified was when he's gonna leave, we're gonna be there to send him off and then a week later we'll be there for him when he gets back. So that's going to be a wonderful experience for us because that's going to be, you know, real life validation for our efforts. We're going to be able to actually see the person when they leave. They're going to be all, you know, happy and excited to go and then see them when they come back and see what, how much that wish being granted has added to their lives, which is, you know, that in itself, you know, just thinking about it makes it all worth it. This year, with 14 schools in the conference now, the PacWest SAC reps made a bigger statement, deciding they would up the ante with a goal to raise $3,000 per school. If um, we get meet that mark, we raise $42,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, I'm personally hoping we can get to $50,000, but I think the goal that we've set this year is a really lofty one, but with great expectations comes great opportunities. And I think it's gonna be a great opportunity for all of me and all of the people in that room behind me um, as far as raising this money and really doing something bigger than just playing a sport or being a student athlete, really doing something for others that need something. The moment I felt like it was hard based off of all the other students' body language, I wanted to do it. Because uh, one, it's, I'm, not doing it, I'm not doing it for me. It's for uh, kids and families who are absolutely struggling. And the idea of their pain, the idea of them being tired, uh, just motivated me at that time period. And uh, $3,000, Holy Names is a really small school. Really, really small. But for some reason, that number popped in my mind, and it seemed, it seemed fun to uh, try to go ahead and attack that in the name of competition. With a new larger goal for Make-A-Wish in place, there's a chance that the Pac West could be the leading fundraiser in all of Division II. But the conference SAC leaders were done. They reviewed NCAA legislation and made recommendations on other very important issues. Then for the first time in our conference, the SAC retreat weekend ended with the PacWest SAC Executive Board getting together face to face with the conference athletic directors to discuss their mutual goals for the future, as well as how the athletic directors could help them. The ADs listened intently to these leaders of tomorrow. In the end, it was definitely a SAC weekend to remember for everyone involved, an important milestone in the development of our growing conference and the outstanding PacWest student athletes we serve. We exist in a place rich with promise, where ideas ignite the spirit of learning where our trustworthy methods are validated by respected results. It's a place where we practice integrity and encourage the development of ethical perspectives. Where creativity burns brightly and expressions of hearts, minds, and souls are nurtured. Where we view challenges through the lens of opportunity and daily circumstances through the eyes of faith. It's where the potential for excellence has no limitations. And each new day begins with hope. Fresno Pacific University. Empowering leaders. Transforming lives. Using this expression from kinematics. With the given interval, plus the integral diverge. And the appropriate substitution would be? What then is the acceleration of the center of mass? Anyone awake? You in the far back. Hey, you back there? You've got to be kidding. Where did you come up with that? You. You? You? Yeah, no. How about you? Mm hmm You in the white.
Hi, this is Wayne Coito, and you're watching PacWest Magazine. Let's go to one of our brand new schools. The scenic and beautiful campus of Point Loma Nazarene University hosted the match between the home team Sea Lions, one of the new squads in the Pac West, and the Hawaii Pacific Sea Warriors, defending co champion of the conference. But this young Point Loma team would not be intimidated by the visitors from the islands, and this action packed, exciting game proved it. With a vocal home crowd led by the student section, and on a day when Point Loma honored women's coach Tim Hall, the winningest soccer coach in school history, the Sea Lions had lots of motivation to seize the win on this warm October day on the coast. With the Sea Lions stifling the high octane HPU offense, the Sea Warriors would finally get a good opportunity to score in the 21st minute on a free kick. Alejandro Porras, ranked top 10 in the nation in scoring, took the shot from 20 yards out and hooked the ball right around the wall of PLNU defenders into the corner of the net to put Hawaii Pacific up one. Point Loma would then hunker down on defense but couldn't muster any goals themselves, so the score would stay at 1-0 going into halftime. The Sea Lions' best chance to score came in the 54th minute. And oh! After a free kick near the top of HPU's box hit the hand of a Sea Warrior defender, PLNU was awarded with a penalty kick. Eric Friesen took the shot to the low right of the net, but his shot attempt was thwarted by a diving stop by goalie Maella Fave. Point Loma would struggle all day to find the back of the net, and in the 78th minute, Hawaii Pacific would seal the win, when Poros found Kanoa Nartetez streaking up the field for a one-on-one -on -one matchup with PLNU goalie Carter Phillips. Nartetez flipped the ball over the sliding Phillips to himself and touched it into the net for the score, giving his teammates the 2-0 victory. First of all, what a beautiful place here at Point Loma. Uh, they had a very organized, excellent team, and, and it took us a while to figure out what they were doing. They, they, were, they had very good movement off of the ball, uh, so defensively it took us a while to figure it out, and we did. Um, I think we limited them to some shots uh, in the second half, uh, and we picked our game up. Got a little bit chippy in the in the, in the end there, um, but you know, no uh, no red cards, not a lot of cards, so it's always very tough to be on the road and get the win. So we'll take this one. We we fight a lot in the last game, and now we we won that win so bad. So I think that we work together uh, very hard and as a group. So the the recompense is here, and we score great goals, two great goals, and we get the win. The conference, uh, extremely competitive. I mean, we played a 4-3 game two nights ago in Azusa Pacific. The new teams that came in, um, the quality of the conference is, has risen, definitely. So there's no there's no games off. I mean, Point Loma's uh, record-wise has struggled this year, but they're going to beat some quality teams because they're very good. Being built for, for which it's being built, and from this school I'll tell you. From this school, will go men and women. Will go men and women. Whose influence will be felt? Whose influence will be felt for good? For good towards the establishment. Towards the establishment of peace international. Of peace. Of peace. Of peace. Of peace international. At California Baptist University, you'll find the adventurous opportunity of a lifetime to live your purpose. CBU offers an expansive range of undergraduate and graduate academic programs taught by award-winning instructors in state-of-the-art facilities. I can still come back and see my professors and they know me face-to-face. -face. It's an amazing relationship that goes from Cal Baptist onto the future. CBU, Campus Life is unparalleled, featuring world-class athletics, fantastic food, lasting friendships, and life-changing ministries. CBU is not just an education, it's an experience. Why don't you join us at CBU? Live your purpose.
doesn't look like your average university, because it isn't. Just 12 miles from San Francisco is an urban oasis where students go beyond the classroom, helping businesses become sustainable, fighting breast cancer, athletes who excel and serve the community. And here, you don't just study history, you help make it. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in right here on OC16. You're watching PacWest Magazine. Holy Names took a trip down to Azusa Pacific for a California North vs. South battle on the soccer field. The PacWest doubleheader featured half of the four former NEIA schools that made the move to NCAA Division II this year. And in the first game, HNU goalkeeper Philip Hoser had to endure a barrage of shots, 11 on goal for the game. After Michael Sahajan got one past Poser in the game's fifth minute to give APU the 1-0 lead, it was Poser's teammate Jaime Phillips who would work his own magic for the Hawks, putting them up 2-1 after two unassisted scores in the game's 39th and 46th minutes. The teams would trade misses and close calls at both ends of the field until the 55th minute when Steven Shiokari tied the game off the assist from Carlos Garcia Partida. The score would remain unchanged at 2-2 after regulation, sending the game into overtime. And in OT, it would be the sneaky midfielder getting his second strike of the day, pushing this golden goal past Poser to give the Cougars the 3-2 victory. Uh, it's a lot of hard work. You just have to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, I got a little lucky, but uh, just happened to go in. We try to work for each other, work for God. Uh, our motto is God first, so we just try to work for each other and, uh, and just never stop fighting. It was, uh, it was a really intense battle by both teams. Uh, both teams playing well. Uh, you know, we were fortunate enough to grind it out in overtime and come away with a game-winning goal, but uh, really tough game by both teams. Um, our team motto is uh, Iron Sharpens Iron, so um, we just uh, want to impact each other's players, so this is the, the game winning, or the game, uh, player of the game, a little token for each game, so uh, pass down each game, and it just happened to come to me today. A lot of quality teams, uh, it's been interesting because a lot of new teams for us, teams that we've never seen before, uh, but uh, we've had a lot of great matches, and look forward to uh, the rest of the year. Game two featured the home team Cougar women's squad on the heels of a brilliant overtime victory of their own over Hawaii Pacific against the young squad from Holy Names. But Azusa Pacific would show no signs of a letdown today and it wouldn't take them long to get on the board. One minute and 20 seconds to be exact when Emily Wood capitalized on a bad defensive clearance to strike from 21 yards away. But Wood wasn't done then. Just six minutes later, the senior midfielder would score again lining up the ball perfectly off the deflection to put the Cougars up 2-0. Kendra Trepanovic and Heidi Wishy would also score goals in the match to give APU a 4-0 victory and inch them closer to their first ever PacWest Championship. Yeah, obviously we got, got an early goal, I think it was in the first uh, two or three minutes, so obviously the start, start was good. Uh, we continued to put pressure on them and got a couple more. Anytime you get three at half, you got to feel, feel good about your performance. I try to get really focused before each game, and uh, this game I was really focusing on taking more shots. I feel like I didn't take uh, as many shots last game as I wanted to, so I was very shot-oriented today, so it worked out. I, I welcome the change. It's a good uh, Good, good place to be. We would like uh, some of our road trips already. So uh, a lot of a lot of new teams, new systems, understanding things differently. When you, you know, for 12 years known at a certain conference, and now you're trying to figure the ins and outs of another one. Uh, it's really different than the past three years. Uh, we had a lot of rivalries with the past teams that we would play, so it's, it's different coming into games not knowing the teams at all. But we want to show up every game and show them who is. So it doesn't really matter who it is. You just want to win.
Founded in 1868, Holy Names University has grown from humble beginnings on the shores of Lake Merritt to a thriving, comprehensive university in the Oakland Hills overlooking San Francisco Bay. Holy Names is committed to the full development of each student, empowering a diverse student body for leadership and service in a global society. What we do at Holy Names University is to bring together athletics and academics so we can produce scholar athletes in a perfect setting. We prepare student athletes and all our students to be global leaders in a very diverse society. And that's why we think there's a perfect match between Holy Names University and the NCAA. Go Hawks! Thanks for joining us on this episode of PacWest Magazine. For more information, check us out on the web or at thepacwest.com. For Bob Hogue, I'm Wayne Poito. See you next week on PacWest Magazine.